Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter what time of night or day, I'm still just as happy you stopped by my channel. Thank you ever so much. I'm Minister Paul J. Byrne, who we haven't met before. I'm the online pastor of this little online faith-based community known as the Social Gospel Worship and Learning Center based in Atlanta, Georgia, sending blog posts and videos around the world. This is not a conventional church at all. We don't even have a building. This is online only. You won't find any man-made teachings about any denominations or creeds. You won't find any uh, of the internal politics here that's normally associated with brick and mortar churches. You won't find any hint of political ideology either. Nor do we ask you to give 10% of your income every Sunday. What we do represent is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crucified, died, re resurrected on the morning of the third day. Even now he is seated at his Father's right hand, waiting for that cue from his dad to come and take us home, and take us home he shall. Having gotten that out of the way, I'd like to move immediately to my message for today and my ongoing biblical study series, where we go through the Bible one, cha uh, one chapter and one verse at a time. Currently, we're in the book of Romans as we began a study of the writings of the Apostle Paul here a couple months back. This is part two of Romans 11 for today. Verses 17 through 36, and we're gonna just limit it to those 18 verses right there. Now, I've been gone for a week, getting this little store up and running, and it's ready. The, uh, the URL or web address for the store is MyAntiqueCarStore.com where you will find not antique cars but a, a, a line of clothing commemorating classic and antique automobiles from the 1930s to the 1970s. Coffee mugs, stainless steel water bottles, wall art, a line of clothing for both men and women. No kid stuff, sorry. But, um, oh, and the uh, nice set of calendars with images of classic automobiles of yesteryear. A fresh image on each page, each devoted to one brand. We've got calendars for Chevy, for Cadillac, for Buick, and Oldsmobile. We've got them for Ford and Mercury, Plymouth and Dodge, Chrysler, plus uh, some brands that are no longer made such as Hudson's, Nash's, and uh, DeSoto's. <laughs> if you've never heard of any of those, don't worry about it. But it's very classy. It's got a lot of uh, uh, pizzazz to it. The photos are all high resolution, high quality. It looks great. Prices start at uh, only about $12. So it's not, it's not expensive. But enough said about that. Just a little plug. One last time. MyAntiqueCarStore.com 
available at this, at this point exclusively on Shopify. That's where you'll find us. Okay? Now, last week, or last time, as we left off uh, our dissemination of the Apostle Paul's letter to the first century church in Jer uh, Jerusalem, actually, I meant to say the church in Rome. We closed that at verse 16 during the uh, midway point of a fairly lengthy teaching concerning the differences between peoples of Jewish descent and those of the remaining Gentile nations at large. Taking up where he left off, Paul wrote, if some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap of the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches are, were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted. But they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant. But be afraid, for if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Close quote. That's Romans 11, verses 17 through 21. Paul the Apostle uses adoption as an example of becoming a true Christian. As this train of thought continues. Now, in this passage, the uh, branches that have been broken off is a metaphor for non believers. New believers from all backgrounds are what Paul calls wild olive shoots. They are grafted into the vine that is Christ, as he taught us I am the vine and you are the branches. from uh, Luke's Gospel and Matthew's as well. By their faith, they became a branch that is part of the olive tree that symbolizes the nation of Israel. Ancient Israelites and modern day ones as well. Since Jesus walked the earth as a Jewish man, all who put their faith in Christ literally become Jewish by adoption. They become a branch of the olive tree that symbolizes Israel. And Christ is the root of that tree, with all believers becoming branches thereof. And then Paul the Apostle warns us that if God did not spare the natural branches, which were the ancestors and descendants of the, of the Hebrew nation at that time, he will not spare you either. All who are grafted into the olive tree, that is Israel, can be cut off and replaced with new believers if they do not bear fruit. This means us and the story. Pause and reflect on that as I gradually move along. Faithfulness then to Christ becomes mandatory. This was a warning from God that we are to remain faith, faithful as Christians or faithful in our belief. Beliefs, pardon me. Faith is something that is continuous and ongoing. It's a, it's a journey, not a destination. Faith is defined in the book of Hebrews as being, I quote, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Close quote. Our faith is not something that occurs only once. Faith is something that is ongoing and continuous. It must be maintained daily by the believer if our walk with Christ is to be genuine and authentic. 
Being fruitful is the evidence of our faith in Christ. Everyone we meet will know that we are adopted into the family of God when we do these things. Paul then explains this within the following verses, and I quote, Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to, to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also would be cut off, without exception. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they can be grafted back in, for God is able to graft them in again. And only God. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, that's verses 22 through 24 of Romans 11 right there, is where that just came from. Let's, let me elaborate on this for a minute. Now, the manifestation of our faith and our deeds is by faith and by by works but they gotta be running together combined side by side how do we keep from being cut off from the olive tree that is not only Israel but the entire body of Christ by continuing in the kindness of God while using his perfect love, which is found in Christ. If we fail to do this, Paul warns, then you will also be cut off. The evidence of our faith can be found in how we treat other people, exemplifying the unconditional love of God through Christ. Our faith, then, depends on our kindness and empathy towards others. After all, if we, quoting him here, quoting Paul here, do not persist in unbelief, then we will be grafted as a new branch into the olive tree that comprises the, uh, the bride of Christ. And this nation unlike the Israeli people of today, will be made up of Jew and non-Jew alike, being regarded by God as equals. Equality in the Bible, there it is. God sees right past the boundaries of the nations and looks straight into the heart of humankind to discern whether or not we should be a part of the family of God. Our faith in God is something that is written on our minds and on our hearts and it manifests itself by the way in which we live our lives as Christians. And now, let's wrap this up for today, starting from verse 25 and away I go. Stick with me now. I'm almost done with this. Here comes part two of the study verses for this week. And I quote, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has received a hardening, in part, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. That quote comes from the back, way back in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 20 and 21. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, for God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Continuing, Paul wrote, 
just as you who at one time were disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order they may now, that they may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy on you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Romans 11, verses 25 through 36 is where that came from. God always keeps his word. Talk about the God remembering the patriarchs. God always keeps his word. Israel, Paul wrote, has received a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel will be saved. Close quote. What was Paul writing about here? All of the nation of Israel will be saved, but only after all the Gentiles who have surrendered to Christ have been brought into the church. That is, all of the non-Jews who are born-again believers. Like us. So, even though the Jewish nation will be saved by God's covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, see Genesis beginning with chapter 15 up to about chapter 32, if you want to read the full story about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's, it's about a 20 to 30 minute read. But the non-Jews will enter into God's kingdom first and the Israelite nation second due to their unbelief regarding the risen Christ as the Son of God. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account, Paul wrote. But as far as the election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable, close quote. So, we are to become reborn by the unconditional love of Christ. Because it's the only way that can happen, you see. There's no, no other road that can be taken. Now let's go back for a minute to what Paul wrote. Who are God's enemies? It is those who refuse to believe and so be saved. God's call is irrevocable, Paul wrote. I'm sure the Apostle Paul was paraphrasing the teachings of Christ, who said, and I am paraphrasing, anyone who comes unto me for worship and for the forgiveness of sins will in no way be cast out. Nobody will be turned away. However, this does not mean that once we are saved that we remain in that state by default. Mm -mm. If a born-again Christian continues to live in sin, whatever their sins might be, or if they become believers only to turn away for whatever reason, it is the same as walking away from a good job, a good marriage, or any other beneficial relationship. Obviously, this would not be a good idea at all. But this also disproves what some denominations teach, which is that once we, were, we are saved by Christ, we remain saved no matter what our behavior is outside the church. Once saved, always saved. Ever heard of that? Well, you just heard about it again. This is a false teaching, people. And if any of you find yourselves in such a church, I would advise you to consider looking for a better one. 
You know, like this one, for example. You don't have to even have to leave the house to, to attend the church. If you watch this channel, the subscription is free. I'll mention that at the very end, and I'm almost done. Stick with me, please. It is imperative, then, that we all become reborn by the unconditional salvation and love of Christ. For God has bound all men over to disobedience, Paul wrote, so that he may have mercy on them all. Close quote. We are all born sinners. Including me. But Jesus through his shed blood, he negates all that. His blood washes our sins away like a good cleanser. Like a good cleanser. Continuing then, let us continue in God's kindness and love. How about you? Are you living your life as being part of the olive tree that is greater Israel? A branch grafted in by God. It all comes down to how we treat other people. If we treat others the way we would like to be treated ourselves, we can never be cut off as an unfruitful branch of the tree. Ever. And if we maintain our faith in God through Jesus Christ our Lord by continuing in his kindness and his grace, we become a part of that tree forever. Let's all begin to practice this. Starting today, starting right now, become a part of the olive tree that is Christ and live your faith as a lifestyle, not just a set of beliefs. We must be willing to show kindness to others whether, whether they deserve it or not. Because Jesus died for us even though we didn't deserve it. This is the crux of the entire matter. If we continue in his kindness, as Paul wrote, God will continue in his kindness for each of us, and there really is no better way to live our lives for Christ. No better way. And that brings us to a close for the biblical study series for today. We will be moving on to Romans chapter 11 next time one of these uh, recordings pops up on your uh, on your uh, YouTube channel or actually if you sign up they just drop it in your inbox and the subscription as I said is free so please don't forget to give me a like and a share or two and to subscribe it's free to subscribe to the channel You can also subscribe to the blog. The paid version is five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year. It works out to about sixteen cents a day, so people can afford that. It's not out of reach for anyone. Um, you can find the uh, if you'd like to make a donation. You can find the. Uh, links in the comment section just below your screen there just click on the word more at the end of the message which is actually a link and it'll, the rest of the message will pop right up the email address or the uh, other um, ways to donate will pop right up where we're a uh, registered nonprofit on PayPal. The email address for PayPal is down there in the uh, uh, section, in the uh, uh, section, in the comments. And uh, you can also, oh, and we're also a, non a registered nonprofit on Stripe. You can donate on Stripe by going to their homepage and clicking the, the search window at the top of the screen. 
and you just type in Social Gospel Worship and Learning Center, it pops right up. Send in any amount you can, but if you can't afford to send me anything right now, don't worry about it. It's not what I'm here for. I do this for nothing. I don't get a salary for this. <laughs> I do this right from my little apartment. Because a disabled man, I can't get out and preach anymore. But I can sure do this. And so here I am, laboring for Christ. Join me, please. Sign up for that blog if you can. Send a donation if you can. But if you can't, just come on back next time. I got so much more stuff I want to teach you. I got so many more points of view that I want to share with you. And all of it has to do with Christianity as it's supposed to be being practiced outside the auspices of tradition or religion. Let's see, yeah, I got that part about the like, share, subscribe. Oh, you'll also find the, um, if you want to subscribe to the blog, you'll find the address to do that too. Uh, again, in the comments below. So, one last thing before I leave, I want to thank you all wholeheartedly for the privilege of your time. You are all very, very much appreciated. And having said everything I can think of to say for this time around, everybody be blessed. Yes, I said be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name.